Democratic socialism was a phrase batted around in the 2016 presidential election, but what does it mean? For an answer to that question, I spoke to three people from this region who call themselves Democratic Socialists, Megan LeMay, Edward Collins Jr., and Dave Largy. Uh, a lot of people, including myself, um, got alarmed towards the end of the uh, 2016 presidential campaign, um, not just at the outcome of it, but at what was leading up to it. And a lot of people felt that there was not an adequate alternative to neoliberal capitalism going on. The Bernie Sanders campaign really electrified a lot of people and introduced them to the idea that there was an alternative to the system that we had sort of been proceeding under the idea that it was carved in stone and we couldn't do anything about it. For you, Megan, how did you become aware of this as a social movement? Was it Bernie Sanders that called your attention to it or research on your own? At first, I became familiar with just the um, struggles against racism and the fight against racism um, in the Pioneer Valley, and that's what kind of first attracted me to activism and socialism. And then once I learned more about that and really learned that the, the connection to capitalism and how capitalism actually creates this inequality um, and benefits from that inequality, that that's what really motivated me to become a socialist and to become active in a political organization. And so when we look at this word, democratic socialist, there are people who certainly look at this and it's a very negative thing for them. And, and, and there are also certain stereotypes attached to it. And there's a video on the DSA website. I'll have us take a quick look at it. Democratic socialism. I know, I know, you probably think democratic socialism is for strong men with elaborate mustaches and French college students. So in that video, it's described as strong men with elaborate mustaches and French college students. How do you define <laughs> this movement? Democratic socialism, and, and uh, very often it gets uh, mentioned without the word democratic, which is a mistake. Uh, you know, is really about um, a fair economy that works for everybody. It isn't really any more complicated than that. Interesting um, to hear you say that you want to pair democratic and socialist together because Bernie Sanders often says he defines himself as a socialist. Mostly, though, when he's challenged on, on, his, so, on his socialism, he says democratic socialist. He repeats it, and he emphasizes the word democratic. Um, we believe in DSA, and every socialist organization doesn't really necessarily subscribe to a, a, a more pluralist a, a approach to this, um, but we really believe that any socialism that is, is arrived at through anything except um, a democratic means through of, and universal suffrage by appealing to people and getting their support is not going to be lasting. And, uh, yeah. But for, I think for people who see this as, as a negative thing, who, who are concerned that democratic socialism will not help this country, they see it as something that's, you know, obviously it's a very complex ideology, but it's something that, you know, would inhibit innovation and would really limit personal freedom. Do you see where they're coming from on that perspective? We cannot have socialism without democracy. And we think that having socialism would actually create more freedom more democracy, that that has to be fundamental to what socialism is. And we at the, in the International Socialist Organization um, see it that it needs to come from below. Uh, we're dealing with decades of, of capitalist propaganda against the idea of socialism. Um, this idea that social, socialism is a system in which uh, everything is taken and, and brought up to a party boss and then redistributed to a few people and so forth. That's capitalism. That's exactly how capitalism works. This idea of, you know, the problem with socialism is that you run out of other people's money. That's a capitalism problem. You can only vacuum up wealth to the 1% for so long before there's no more to be had. A lot of the criticisms of socialism that the, the media and the pundit class and so forth have, have put forth is actually um, a very strong criticism of capitalism itself and doesn't apply to socialism. So I know that the, the Democratic Socialists of America, this is not the first time that there's been a Pioneer Valley chapter. How is this chapter now different and will it be lasting? The reason it's Pioneer Valley was because we wanted to extend this not just in the, uh, in, in the north part of the valley where there is a lot of progressive activism and so forth, but also in Chicopee and Holyoke and Springfield, um, the places where it can do the most good. And I think focusing 
the spread beyond um, beyond you know Northampton, Amherst, and something is 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 been good for us. Yeah, I, I What's think different that, now? Yeah. I think that's right. Uh, I, I also, we cannot ignore what's referred to in the shorthand as the Bernie bump. Uh, sure. DSA um, increased its membership by 600 percent in 18 months. I mean, it's just phenomenal and incredible. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, you know, it, it is what Dave already mentioned that uh, this time around it's reached out beyond the college communities where it had always had roots. Um, but also had a, a, a very transient membership because people are here for four or five years and then they, you know, they, they move away. And once you branch out into, uh, uh, into the lower valley, into the more industrial communities, um, you know, it's a good thing because it has the potential to, be, uh, to last longer. Um, but there's most of that growth, not all of it by any means, but most of that phenomenal growth um, has been among millennials. Um, and they are entering their working years under a very different set of circumstances that those more long in the tooth, such as I did, where there was plenty of economic opportunity. And if you, if you didn't like the job that you had in a factory in Springfield in the 1950s or 60s, you walked down the street and got another one, probably a better one. Uh, we, ha we have a generation of young people who um, have what for, I think, capitalists is a dangerous combination. They're highly educated, they're highly skilled, they're broke because they're burdened with uh, student debt, and there aren't the economic opportunities that were there for earlier generations. And they, they have a clear perception of why that is. And I think that's why they're moving in the direction of a democratic socialist solution to these problems. One last question, and I'll direct it to you, Megan. Whether it's DSA or ISO, I've seen among democratic socialists this concept repeated again and again that we want to change the world. Mm -hmm. What would that world look like? That's a great question. Uh, I think it would just be a world where people um, can wake up every day and not have to worry about um, how they're going to pay their rent that month or how they're going to buy groceries or how they're going to buy their kids new shoes that people could know, you know, there could be full employment for people, who, for everyone who wants a job, um, that they wouldn't have to be stressed about losing their job, that they could um, just be able to pursue things that they, uh, art or music that they want to pursue, um, and that there would be actual equality, um, freedom from deportation, freedom from racism and sexism um, that people experience every day here. Great. Well, Megan, Ed, and Dave, thanks for your time today.